let's uh i hear that i hear that uh a horn honking outside um uh, of the office uh mm-hmm. all right here we are um so we left off with bitcoin script and we're done with that now right we now understand bitcoin script how coins are transferred and uh that that solidifies our base level understanding mm-hmm. we're now looking at this contract and we ran through a very basic few things yesterday we know about these props now they're stateful props on a stateful contract mm-hmm. and we know we can make assertions about the outputs of a transaction if we can make assertions about the outputs of a transaction that for example makes sure that a contract um survives and continues to live into the new transaction right mm-hmm. Um, how might we use that to make a multi-party uh, contract that can uh, survive uh, and be updated by uh, by different people at different times? Just speculate on, you know, thinking about, okay, well, you know, we have uh, these tools, right? What what could you try to do with them? So you can... So, we have an output that gets created by the, the original yeah. contract. What's the goal here? Um, to make a contract that maybe Alice could update, then Bob could update, then Charlie could update, and then back to Alice, and then back to right. Bob, and then all the way, people just, anyone yeah. can update it. Okay. But whenever they do, it has to keep living, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're... Uh, your um, spend methods or whatever they're called. Public functions. Uh, yeah. Could have different requirements that are constrained to a particular like public key, mm-hmm. for example, or multiple allow keys. multiple keys. Mm-hmm. Alice or Bob. You say public, it has to be gay public key hash order of Bob or Alice or whoever. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Right. Um, or even different public methods, which could be used uh, by different people. For each one. Yeah. Okay. So there's that, right? And then, and then those public methods have to make sure that you know, less some state update or some counter. Um, let's take a look at a stateful counter contract that's got a little bit less in it, so we can actually think of the easiest possible stateful mm. example. Um, so there's the you should check out and you can script ink boilerplate mm-hmm. so people should check that out there's a bunch of contracts in here so once again you have an artifact folder which isn't included here but once you compile it you would see it and then SIC contracts is the main one so there's a lot of contracts in here guys <laughs> wow uh, what we want you can even do you know lots of contracts voting Zor puzzle uh, price bets I don't know uh, BSV 20 mint basic uh, but the counters folder uh, so uh, so GitHub, it's script ink, boilerplate, and it's SRC contract. Hmm. Okay. And so we're going to go to um, counter. If I can find it. Uh, Next one, yeah. Counter, right. So we're importing a cert, might certainly read this to make sure. Yeah, hmm. right. So it's very simple. What is this contract uh, saying? Why don't you run through? Okay, so, yep, if we go through the counter is what we extend the smart contract with. We've then got a prop, and it's obviously got true because it's stateful. Uh, We've got a big int, which is the count, which is going to be incremented. We then go into the constructor, which is very simple. We call the, um, the super. Um, with our arguments, and then we set the count. Uh-huh. So that's to start with. We're just setting the count to start. So uh-huh. is that actually? Did we pass that? Pass that in, or was that just? Let's have a look up there. No, uh-huh. no, it's just a value at this point. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. The constructor. Yeah, we pass it in. Yeah. For a new instance. Yeah. Yeah. For each new uh-huh. instance. Right. Okay. Um, and then our first method is just incrementing it so we put this dot increment and 
What are the constraints? Do we have any constraints? Any asserts? No, no asserts at there. The oh yeah, that's. Oh, at the, yeah. Okay, at the bottom, I was only going down. Right, and so we set the amount. Make sure the balance. Oh, okay. So we're actually setting the amount there. Oh, we've gone into the um, pre-image to go and have a look at it mm -hmm. and get the um, amount that's in there. And uh, then we're doing the outputs and we're saying that it's a byte string, which is building build state output. So that is a... Is that, that's not a method. That must be. Where, where's where's build state output? So change output. I want you to ignore. Right. Um, we're not going to use that in Babbage. I don't believe. Okay. And what about build state output? Build state output, or at least uh, I don't believe. Maybe there will be. Change outputs, but I'm not very familiar with that yet. Okay. Right. Um, I don't think we should use that uh, okay. for our initial one. Yeah. But a state output, right? Um, if you actually, and we're using this inside of R12, so let's just hover over this to see the docs. Um, build state output. So it says oh, yeah. that it, it, a built in function to create an output containing the new state. Oh. It takes input, the number of Satoshis. In the output, right. right. So that's going to actually cre create an instance of an output that needs to be in the transaction, right. So in our case, we're saying, all right, this is the output. This is a new output that I expect to be in the new transaction, right. And then it's saying, yeah. in my case with the coin flip, right? Yeah. Think about this. Alice puts in some value when she constructs it on line four to six, right? Mm -hmm. She's going to make this output script and she's going to put, we talked about there's no rep representation of Satoshi's in the output script yeah. for first creation. But Where? then when Bob, so we talked about cancel offer yesterday, we'll go into uh, accept offer. When Bob mm -hmm. accepts, he needs to you know reveal a number and we'll get to that later, but yeah. times 2n on line 77. Mm -hmm. What is that saying? Uh, every time its value doubles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the state can only be um, zero, you can see on, on line 67. So the one time that it is valid to call this, right? Yeah. What are we going to do? Now let's run through this, right? We're going to assert that the state is zero, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sure Bob signed. Right. Right. Make sure that Bob is either revealing zero or one. So the way the coin flip contract works is Alice reveals, or Alice creates zero or one, then Bob creates zero or one, and then at random, and then Bob, and then uh, Bob doesn't know what Alice picked originally, and then Alice reveals, and if they if they match, Alice wins. <laughs> if they don't match, then Bob wins. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's how the coin toss works. But in this case, Alice has already kind of committed to a hash of her value that Bob doesn't know. But it's a blinded value, meaning that Bob can't know what Alice did. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but Bob is now guessing, you know, a number and trying to be different than Alice without knowing what Alice did. It's a 50-50 shot, right? Yeah. Bob has to pick zero or one. So that's what that assertion on, on 71 is. Um, then we actually do some state variable, or sorry, some, some instance variable, member variable assignments. Mm. We're saying now, Bob's number is saved in the state of the contract, right? Yeah. And, remember 74, this, Bob's number, is actually true, right? If we look at stateful on uh, line uh, 38. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true, meaning it stays, sticks around, that's what that means. Right. So, and we're also making the state once, right? Why do you have to set, um, you're saying this dot Bob number equals Bob, or you're saying to the one that's passed in? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Hi, so that's what the number Bob picked when he accepts the offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. To accept an offer, he has to pick. And then, why are we setting these on 74 and 75 before we call 77? Because that hover new hover. output has to contain the state of the current contract. Right, is which it? is that. Right. So that output that's built is based on the current contract, right? It's locking, scripting everything? Yes, which is incorporating these mutations. Mm-hmm. Now these are already in here. Yeah. Now this dot, these things. If you did it after, then it would have a old state. If I did it before. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 right. If I built the output before I updated my state variables, then the output would be based on old state. Mm. Okay. If I, yeah, so we're doing it in the right order here. And then what is the significance of uh, 77, though, beyond just making the output uh, have the same script or having the correct script? Beyond just having the correct script, what is uh, 2n? It's doubling the yeah. amount. Yeah. Um, not only does Bob uh, have to... Yeah, because they both put in one dollar or whatever. Right. So whatever Alice put in, Bob has to double. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, not only does Bob have to create the correct script, but he also has to double the money. Yeah. And okay. then uh, we yeah. take the hash... There's original the values from Alice, right? Mm-hmm. So here's an output declared 77. Uh, why are we hashing the outputs on line 78? Because they're going to be used as our key to unlock the padlock, aren't they? The well, yeah, but but why would we have to hash the outputs? Because um, that... well, what's our sig hash? Well, uh, let's look at the top. It's got to be up here. So there's that one. Single sig hash file. Okay. So we're using a sig hash single. We have to include the hash of the outputs. Mm-hmm. And we need the output to add. Because so I'm assuming it doesn't have its um that hash hasn't or the hash doesn't automatically change, I assume. And so since we're adding a new output, we probably have to manually update that, maybe. You're not updating it, but you're checking it, right? Bitcoin script doesn't update pre image or anything. It, oh, it yeah. checks it. Oh, okay. Right? But what is in the pre-image? Is it just the outputs in the pre-image? If I go look at the pre-image again. Mm. Right? Yeah. Number eight. Eight. So yeah, we have to hash them. We have to hash yeah. the output. So you can't, you know, just, you have to hash because the pre-image contains uh, a hash of the outputs, which of course in the case of sig hash single, is only the corresponding output, right? Mm-hmm. So the delegated next output of this contract, that's a use of sig hash single, right? Mm-hmm. Can you zoom back in? Let go. Here? Yeah. We got the accept offer. Output equals hash. No state output. Hmm. Does this return a um, unlocking script? Sorry. Does uh, this public method return yeah. one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you okay. invoke it properly, remember call pub earlier? Well, yesterday. Mm. Yeah. We'll get I'll back just, to I was just trying to see how the output actually got. Uh, included, but I guess yeah. because you're saying this dot, so it must do its internal thing. Well, think about this. Um, when I create this transaction, and actually go to send it to the miners, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the unlocking script that would unlock the previous output, would that script succeed if I neglected to actually include the output, which reflected in hash outputs? Would my signature pre-image be correct? Um, no, because yeah. you're doing the hash signal, so you have to. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'd have to include it, right? If it mm-hmm. didn't include it, suppose I, you know, I actually have a, a thing here in um, operations.ts 
for accepting the offer. How does accepting the offer work? Well, um, we've got a challenge here, and it's got to do this, and we're going to get the offer transaction, and now we're going to do some things we'll get to later. But uh, I'm going to, you know, call. I get my unlocking script. Basically, let's jump down to 297 and ignore everything about it, right? Mm -hmm. I get my unlocking script by by calling the accept offer public method, right? And then I use that unlocking script and create action. Yeah. Create action three, four times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my output here is the next output script. And the value on 360 is 2n. The next output script, I'll be randomly setting times 2 there. For mm -hmm. so that Satoshi value. Mm -hmm. Now, what if that wasn't. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't, yeah. This, yeah. this wouldn't unlock, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about that amount? Well, this oh, I see. Yeah. bend couldn't happen, could it? If the output's creating value? The output match. it's creating value is less. Because that, out, mm. that amount is in the pre image, right? In the pre image. Mm. Right. So you've got to update it inside the pre image. In, we passed it in on, on line uh, uh, 77. Mm -hmm. yeah. For the locking script. Yeah. For the right. new hash outputs, for the new output, the state output has to have this amount in it. Yeah. Mm. Build a state not, not necessarily the unlocking for the previous, but I guess it's in the. Well, it is because look at the assertion the, on on seventy nine. Mm. Yeah, okay. Sure. Hmm. Because it's in this method, then yeah, I guess it's constrained to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you understand a bit about stateful contracts. A bit, yeah. You can make things that live for a long time, right? Now, after this happens, after this happens, Bob has accepted the offer. Where does that leave us? Can Alice now take the UTXO that Bob just created in his transaction? And can Alice use line uh, 59 <clears throat> after with the new UTXO? No, because the no. contract state updated. Mm. Mm. So the number wouldn't be right. there anymore. Line 75 is important. Oh, I see. Yeah. If you yeah. don't do that. Yeah, then it could use the one above. Yeah. Mm. It could. So only in state zero can Alice cancel the offer. If Bob mm. spends accepting the offer. Yeah. Yeah, then that's Alice nullified. Yeah. Alice yeah. is now bound by this contract that she created for herself and yeah. Bob. <laughs> she can't get her money back anymore. Yeah. Now let's get into how this coin flip contract actually works. Why is there an Alice hash up here, do you think? Um, on the constructor? Mm -hmm. Why would we need that in this contract? In order to confirm that um, the data provided by Alice is in order to, to sign it, yeah. Uh, you need in order it. to for Alice to commit mm. right to some value that she can't go back and change mm -hmm. later. Mm. Yeah, right? We have that hash and we verify it later. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now do you know what the SHA two five six hash of zero is or could you easily find it? I mean, uh, I'm not asking you to memorize it, but could you easily find the hash of the number zero? If you wanted to, you know. Is this a trick question? Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, because you can hash anything. You could easily hash the number zero. Yeah, right? yes. And yeah. you could easily hash the number one, right? Yes. Yeah. So if Bob knew that Alice hashed the number zero, he could check. They can say, well, I want to win, so I'm going to oh, take one as yeah. my number. So he'd be able to check that she hadn't cheated then. So so how can Alice stop Bob from cheating? Can 
you think of the answer? Mm. How could she make a hash that uh, <laughs> only that only later she would reveal the value? Uh, right, so the Bob card just makes the hash of zero or the hash of one. You could do a hash that requires some sort of data to be mm -hmm. revealed. Some type of... Type 42, is it? Type. You could use 42. No, not type 42. No. You could use some key, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some, key. some yeah. secret thing that she has to reveal. Let's look at how Alice reveals the winner on line 84. Mm -hmm. Isn't that an HMAC or no? It's similar. It's a simpler version of an HMAC. Mm -hmm. You know, we could use an HMAC actually. If we had that functionality in S script, which maybe we do, maybe we don't. Mm -hmm. But look at what I wrote here on line 84 and, and in this method. Walk me through what's happening in this method. This is the, this is the crux of the coin flip contract, right? Mm -hmm. How is this contract working? Why is it fair? So you take Alice's nonce, which is that range she value you provided, in, right? Plus Alice's number. Which she now has to reveal, right? Okay. And we hash it, that's the hash for verification. Um, we assert that that equals this to Alice hash. Which was, is, is this from Alice's side? Mm hmm. Okay. So Alice originally constructed this contract yeah. at the very beginning. Yes. And that state, Alice hash, propagated forward because, you know, line 26, prop true, right? Yeah. But it survived all the way through Bob accepting on 66, right? Yeah. Now Alice Hash is propagated all the way forward. Bob saw what Alice Hash was. Bob doesn't know what Alice Nonce was until now. Oh. Uh, right? Okay, now, so now she's revealing. So now he can in. check that that hash actually mm -hmm. equals the one that Alice originally gave him. Mm -hmm. Included in Alice's number, so he knows she didn't cheat and switch that number. Mm hmm. And then he checks those numbers. Yeah. And I'll uh, see so Alice right. is zero or one, so it has to be one of those two cases. Uh -huh. So you go down and say, make sure Bob's number, or if Bob's number is Alice's number, then. Um, and who has to sign? Oh, yeah, then Alice. No, 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 Look at the no, comments no, as well. Picked. Yeah. If they are the same. Because Alice, the same Alice wins, yeah, otherwise Bob. Uh -huh. And the winner signs. Mm -hmm. And the winner gets to decide where the outputs go. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Hmm. So, you guys think you have a solid understanding of this uh, of this contract? <laughs> I think I'm getting a feel for it. Right. Ask questions if you have them. <laughs> let's run. Let's run through this and make sure that you understand hmm. what's going on here. It's a state pull contract for a coin flip between Alice and Bob, right? Right. So suppose Alice ne or sorry, so let's let's think through all the ways that people could cheat, right? Mm. What are some examples of ways that a malicious party, Alice or Bob, might try to dupe each other? And this mm. and this, hey, let's flip a coin kind of contest. Hey, Bob, I'm gonna uh, pick. Well, here's my number. I'm picking one. Uh -huh. Actually, I'm picking zero. Mm -hmm. All right. So just directly saying, here's the number, and then oh, jokes on you. It's the wrong one. Okay. So why is that method of cheating ineffective? How have we mitigated that method of cheating by Alice? We included the secret nonce mm -hmm. that as well as the number that we're hashing, mm -hmm. so that if either one of those actually. Um, changes. The mm -hmm. hash wouldn't match. It wouldn't match. And so what line number is making sure that Alice can't do that to Bob? The assert. Or, yeah, the yeah assert hash for effect. verification equals, mm -hmm. yeah, Alice's hash. So if it was just the number being hashed or something, then Alice would still have to send the mm -hmm. number. Wait. If it was just the number being hashed, who could cheat? I think so. 
Alice, if she has, say she hashed her number and sent Well, it. yeah, because if it's a one or naught, then we know what the hash is. Bob would know what the hash was. So Bob. he could. Yeah. So he could cheat. And Bob wouldn't know, what the, wouldn't know what the number is, or he would. Oh, yeah, because you just check the hash, like we said. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Bob could cheat, right? If if Alice just hashed the number. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because Alice would be revealing her hand yeah. prematurely. Mm. So we want a way to conceal the number that Alice picked while also still making sure that Alice has to stick with the number that she picked. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. That's called a yeah. blinding scheme. Mm. Very important. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's one way that Alice could uh, cheat by, oh, joke's on you. I picked the, I changed my thing. So we, we stopped that by using a hash, right? Mm-hmm. And then we stopped Bob from cheating that because... Um, we added the nonce. We added the nonce. Right. We're blinding them from what the actual... Right, that's right. important. So now he can't guess. He's not going to guess that really long nonce. Mm. Okay. Right. 32 bytes long or something. Um, I mean, he can try. <laughs> How long is it going to take him? Yeah. Long time. Longer than the age of the universe. Mm. <laughs> Multiplied by the number of atoms in the universe mm. uh, in units of uh, uh, years, right? Right. Uh, so, anyways, not going to happen. Uh, okay. How else could they cheat? What if Bob just never accepted the offer? And just said, ha ha, your, your coins are locked now. <laughs> Bye. See you later. We have to have a time. Well, a time out, don't we? Maybe not for that. I mean, we might. That could be We just have to have, yeah, you could time out, though. You could have time for Bob instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's important. That's later. Yeah, but, but yeah. what if originally, right? It's very simple. Alice made an offer. And yeah, Alice just needs a way to get it back. Yeah, 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 right. So one way that Bob could cheat if we don't prevent it mm. would be to just uh, do nothing. Just drop off the face of the earth and say, ah, joke's on you. <laughs> you lose money. If I have to back, lose, right? you lose, yeah. Right. Well, Bob doesn't lose anything. No. But, um, well, he doesn't win either. He hasn't put anything in. Yeah. Alice has. So that's why, you know, why do we need my, my, my 59? Yeah, yeah, so she can cancel, yeah. If, if Bob doesn't respond after yes. a, Time, right? Then mm-hmm. you know Alice can just cancel. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, if Alice could cancel any time, uh, why is that bad for Bob? Because he's put money in. Right. So if he already accepted the offer, yeah, then yeah. Alice can't cancel anymore. Oh uh, yeah, but we've we've accounted for that with the contract state. We have, yes. Yeah. That's why contract. And that's why this method here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now we're getting somewhere, right? We're stopping these people from cheating. Yeah. All right. So suppose that um, here's a here's a really hard one. Suppose that um, first Alice makes an offer, and then Bob accepts the offer, locking Alice in. Mm-hmm. And in so doing, Bob publishes his number. So now Alice knows that Bob published his number, right? Mm-hmm. But she's already... And Alice knows the number that she's already committed to. Yeah. So, so now Alice... Um, neither can get out of it. Knows, what is it? Neither can get out of it now. Neither can get out of it. But you're right, because it's accepted now. Yeah. It's been committed. There was an offer and there was an acceptance. So that is done. Yeah. There's no going back from that, right? But yeah. so someone's going to win, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. But what if Alice realizes that she lost? It doesn't matter. Or instead of being cooperative and calling this function on line 84, what if she just says, oh, well, no. because I lost, <laughs> I'm just going to not let you take your money. And I'm just going to never reveal my knots and just go away. And Bob gets to take it back after a certain amount of time. That's right. So there is one more way to unlock this. 
right. contract. If Ellis just goes away and drops off the face of the earth on line 84, doesn't do that because she's not being an honorable. Mm-hmm. And think of the implications here. Yeah. There's a record on chain permanently of, you know, publicly, at least, not permanently, but publicly, mm. at least, of, of what Ellis chose to do. Did she choose to lose, like, uh, an honorable person? Or did she act stubbornly? Oh. <laughs> now you know who you're dealing with, what kind of person you're dealing with. And the last resort is down here, right? So, yeah. what are the constraints in place on this? Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, it has to be that uh, they have both agreed. So that's your contract state one. Contract state one. Yeah. Um, and then you just check the signature for Bob, yeah, and uh, check that's valid. And then finally, we have our time lock, right? Okay. So if so, it, yeah, if it expires, then uh, then what actually happens? So Bob wins automatically, okay? Yeah, because he's just signed it. Yeah. All right. Time out is set in the constructor or something. By Alice originally, they all agree on it. Oh, yes, up there. Okay. Because there's no way to mutate certain values after the constructor has been run, even though they Wait, are all set to time up. What is it? Who sets the time up? Who creates the contract? The yeah. Beginning. Alice. So, Alice? They have to agree. Oh, oh so well. Bob is just agreeing it by actually accepting her offer. Right. Yeah. By line. You see, Bob has done his due diligence, hasn't he? Yeah. What if Bob is... What the time value is? What is it? How does he know what the time value is? Well, it's part of the contract. Mm. It was constructed in the constructor. Yeah. So it's up to Bob to look at that. It's set to like 10 years and now it's like, ha ha, you don't need to get it. No, no, but but he would have accepted it, wouldn't he? (laughs) Hmm. You're not checking it, though. But yeah, I think you do. It's up to you to check the contract you're if you're not checking it. But do you want to sign the con? Do you want to go forward or not? Right? Are you going to? Where's that check go? It's not checked in this contract. It's not checked on chain, is it? Why would it be checked on chain? Why would the miners do that due diligence for Bob? No, it's That's up to Bob to either he okay. um, acknowledges that she that he trusts Alice. Or he has to check the contract himself, which is why it's available, why it's actually, um, okay. the code is actually there. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're saying it wouldn't make sense to do like, um, assert the time out value is less than whatever. Okay. No. Why would the miners nanny stand? Why would they do a mm. babysit? Why would they babysit these people? <laughs> uh, just checking. Hang on, this is what happens in Ethereum, isn't it? Why people get rugged, because... Mm, this isn't a lesson about Ethereum, and I won't speculate on it. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> but... Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we don't do that in this uh, contract, because when Bob sees what Alice proposes, when Bob sees that locking script that Alice has created with these stipulations on it, with all of these terms and conditions... Yeah. But this... If Bob accepts something, and he signs on yeah. 66 with a signature... Which is here. Yeah. But all... uh, if you sign something and you didn't read the contract, yeah, what but, happens? but this does mean that all the bobs of this world are going to have to understand how to read smart contracts. Well, sure. Or they're going to have to use applications that act as fiduciaries to their interests. Hmm. Agents or, uh-huh. yeah. Right. I think it's, uh, their agents there represent the council. Hmm. Right. Why do we have lawyers? <laughs> yes, I, I get what you're saying now. You're saying mm-hmm. yes, yeah. you say like that. Whatever yeah. the higher level code is, it will say if mm-hmm. you know, timeout is acceptable, right. then yeah. accept offer. Yeah. And if your lawyer lies to you about what's in a contract, <laughs> can you go back on that contract? You can prove that your lawyer lied to you? No, you can't go back on it, you have to actually sue the lawyer, surely. Um, yeah, could be, yeah. I mean, you, 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 you get 
you get compensated though, right? You say, look, this lawyer breached their duty to me to give me a, a sweet answer about what this was. They misrepresented yeah. everything. And so if an app doesn't represent things properly in a contract, then the app developers are liable. Mm. The parties engaged, the apps are the agent of the user now. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So before calling line 66 of this code, mm. Bob needs to look at that timeout value and make sure that it's acceptable to him. Yeah. Because if it's 10 years, yeah. then Alice just involuntarily locked Bob's coins in a hard locker type <laughs> locking <laughs> thing for 10 years. Yeah, yes. And he doesn't have to wait 10 years. He, he would have to. Yeah. But you it, can do that. But there was no signal associated with it, so it was pointless. Oh, yes, there was. <laughs> yes, there was. It's right here, right? It's, it's right, right here. On line, on line 54. It's, or sorry, um, yeah, line 54. Yeah, but it's no, it's that's possible. not a signal. No, I'm talking about yeah. a signal for the world. Oh, I see. I see. You're yes, blocking. yeah. Yes. Well, the, the signal is Bob is a really unintelligent... <laughs> Not you, Bob. No, just <laughs> not, not just, a not, Bob. Not, 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 no, but, but you. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yes, we understand. Right. What's like the so, general guidelines for determining if particular constraints should be checked in the contract, the con chain, or in some higher level uh, application? Hmm. It's um. I know we demo. Mm. The fish off and all that. Mm. And it seems like sometimes it's a little bit ambiguous trying to mm. figure out if it should be in script or if it should be at level. Does mm -hmm. it facilitate the exchange between parties? Mm. Between multiple parties, not just like mm. one individual? If I want to shoot myself in the foot, right? Mm. Then the miners. Do not stop me from doing that. Yeah. Do they? Right. Yeah, you could just lock up your, yep. your coins and never get them back. Right. I could send a million Bitcoin into private keys that I'm irresponsible <laughs> enough to even hold on to. I, th um, I thought we weren't going there, but yes. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm just saying that someone could do that. And, um, and then... The miners, are they going to stop me? Are they going to say, no, 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 this is a bad idea. Don't do this. <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. No. They're just, all they um, care about is being paid. They just do what the transaction says. Yeah. They look at the code, they do it. So the yeah. miners are not going to save you, ever. Mm. If you think the miners are going to save you, no. They're like a notary or a witness. Yeah. These contracts that we make with Bitcoin are peer-to-peer. We sign them. Mm. And we also notarize them. Yeah. What is the form of the notary? What 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 represents the notarization of a contract after it has been duly executed in Bitcoin? Well the signature, the fact that you have actually well, put your signature on it. That's the signature. But when you sign a paper document, public notary stamps it out. Oh, okay, stamp, yeah. What is the form of the notary stamp? Stamp is an important word. What is the form of the notary stamp? In, is that why it's included in a block? Yes. Yeah. It's the Merkle proof. Right. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. By putting something in a block and fixing it in time, you say, we, the notaries of this world, Public notaries, notary mm. public, right? Witness this thing happening. If I want to sign a document, um, suppose I want to sign a will that says that in this will, uh, we're going to have mm. three people pull numbers out of a hat, and that's going to determine how my possessions are split up after I'm, I'm dead. And maybe it's a very poorly written document, it's got grammar errors, it's got all these problems, right? Mm. Okay. If I want to sign this, and I go to a notary public, and I say, I'd like you to witness me signing this document, mm. right? 
are they going to stop me? No. Nope. No, they can't. All right, looks good. So you signed it. Good to go. Mm. They're going to say, I yeah. see that you signed this. Yeah, give us the $100. <laughs> All right, give us the fee. I see that you signed this. Mm. Thank you for your business. Mm. Mm-hmm. Same with the miners. The miners will never save you. No. Right. And that's how it works. Mm. So the answer to your question about uh, what goes on chain is what terms do you stipulate with respect to the people with which you are dealing? Well, maybe another way to put it too is so you want the it's not necessarily just the data because in both cases the data could go on chain. But it's like the the rules or like the, um, the well, yeah. check. It's yeah. the opcodes, really. <laughs> the, the assertion, right? Yeah. Because you could put the data still on chain. When you yeah. And like push, yeah. you know, push data. Yeah. You could do that. But then I guess it's the checking of it, the validation, all that. Mm. It would be not on chain. Mm. So it depends on if you want that. Right. Yeah. The assertions. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's assertions in all these methods. Yeah. yeah. Every script method must have at least what? One assertion. One assertion, and yeah. it probably should be at the end. There's never a point to doing anything after an assertion, unless you're going to make another assertion in a public method of an script contract. Right. Because why would you, right? Mm. Yeah. No valid reason to make any code after an assertion. Unless... You're going to do another one, yeah. There's going to be another one because mm. why? Because it doesn't have any effect. It's only assertions right. that actually have an effect. Right. Mm. That's how you write contracts. Mm. So what they're, if I, uh, so they're I effectively think... clauses, aren't they, in a contract? Mm-hmm. Or the way I described them previously was they're like obstacles in an obstacle course that you can only complete if you check off all of them. Mm. Yeah, within a method, yeah. Programmable money. Yeah. Do you have a newfound appreciation for what that term actually means? Yes. Mm -hmm. What does programmable money mean? Either of you. (sighs) You got it, Bob. You, you've got to, <laughs> it means that you can make contracts between people um, peer to peer. Right. And is it peer to minor to peer? Do the miners? No. Tell, you no? can you can just ignore miners. They don't have any effect as far as you're concerned. Rules of the contract. In no. the rules, yeah. Right. They witness things. Now, if I um, try to spend the same coin twice, Oh, they'll stop that, yeah. They'll stop that because why? Um, well, because that's what they check. They actually, that's their job. It's to witness always, and always to stop double spend. It's always fraud to double spend. Yeah. If I, as a notary public, do not verify the identity Meaning, if I if I if I let someone sign off the same title, the property, mm. the two people, yeah, suppose I have it notarized that I sold my car to one person, and then I also sign that same car to this someone else the next day, yeah. And the notary, they go to the same notary. <laughs> Are they going to look at me a little weird? Did <laughs> you sell that car yesterday? Yeah, but mm-hmm. they probably won't do anything. I mean, they. they the police will do something. Okay? Yes. Miners enforce rules. They yeah. do enforce the double spend. Yes. But they only enforce the rules that are written in the contract and and prevent people from committing fraud that way. Mm. Yeah. So it's a system that is really efficient at stopping people from committing fraud against one another. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's important. Yep. In the world, actually. It is. So... Um, now you understand staple contracts. We can run through, you know, we ran through all of the methods of this contract. Now I want you to run through and describe from top to bottom, if you can, uh, 
Bobby, I think you did the last one with uh, the counter. So, mm-hmm. Braden, you get the, the harder one. Um, <laughs> All right. To run through this contract, uh, what are we importing? What are we using? What are we doing? How does this contract work? Um, we import in some useful functions and classes and things from Script TS. We go down, we have our one export default, which is our class, when for the contract, which extends the base class smart contract. Then we have our uh, properties of this class, which are stateful, so we have app prop true. Mm-hmm. App prop denotes these are properties and mm-hmm. their types. And, and what properties do we have and why are those properties included? So 256 for Alice's hash timeout, which is big end because we can't use, um, like, um, was it primitives or we, right? Yeah. yeah. So you have to use big int or, yeah. Um, was it big int? Mm, so string one. Yeah. Byte string. Byte, byte string. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Byte string. Right. Yeah. Um, so we got those types there on each of those. Um, and then just go through each of the properties and briefly describe why each of them are necessary to effectuate this contract. Alice's hash is necessary to provide Bob with some information that he can later validate the um, number that Alice picked to make sure she wasn't cheating. Right. Using, yes. Yep. Timeout is useful for um, Bob and Alice both agree when this contract will timeout, at which um, Bob can um, claim the coins if Alice just leaves them hanging. Mm-hmm. Um, Alice's public key is denoted there. Bob's public key, the two parties in this coin flip contract. Mm-hmm. And we have Bob's number, which is the number that Bob picks. And we have the contract state, which keeps track of whether or not Bob has accepted this mm-hmm. contract. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And we proceed to the constructor, which initializes this contract with those values that are passed in, such as who is Alice, who's Bob, what is Alice's hash, mm-hmm. um, the timeout, Contract state, which defaults to zero. It's the starting state, and then Bob's number. Initially, num- initially these numbers are are, are kind of empty. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. yeah, they don't have to be initialized by Alice at the beginning. Uh-huh. They're kind of preset default before right. they're used. Yeah. Right. So then we assign all the variables, and then we you know, know there's one super, yeah. super constructor passing those same arguments, so we can use it how it needs to. Uh-huh. We assert that uh, Bob's number is zero or one. Mm-hmm. If it's provided. Right. It's provided. Is that actually uh, uh is that actually a? Uh, oh it's default night point. No, remember we added this yesterday? You can see my blue line or my green line here on the on the end of line four eight here. Oh, yeah. I should remove that. Yeah, because we Bob's numbers are provided at the beginning. Yeah. Right. So let's just go back to how okay. this was before I, you know, made that change. 